Hi, and uh, thanks for the introduction, uh, and thanks for coming. Uh, my, my name is Jens Müller. I'm from the University of Konstanz. Oh, what happens? And uh, yeah, I did this work together with uh, Roman Redle and Harald Reiterer. As uh, the research area being addressed with this work, uh, um, this work deals with the design of mixed reality environments uh, to support co-located co collaborative tasks. So um, correspondingly, the contribution of this work is a design recommendation on how to design mixed reality environments suitable for uh, carrying out collaborative tasks. Uh, due to the time constraints, I will only focus on the most important uh, parts or findings of, of this work, so please um, read the note if you're interested in more details or ask questions afterwards. Yeah, collaboration. One crucial aspect for successful collaboration is that, or is the availability of a uh, shared visual context. And um, yeah, shared visual context can be extremely helpful for the collaborators when they have to exchange spatial information um, for example, when they want to guide each other's attention to specific uh, objects in the work environment. Uh, such typical collaboration, uh, collaborative situations occur when one collaborator, for instance, asks another person to hand over a specific object in, in the workspace. So let's assume we have Alice sitting in the lower left corner, and uh, she's asking Bob to hand her over some sticky notes. So she, she uses uh, the deictic expression um, over there. Um, I hope it says, yeah. Could you please hand me those sticky notes over there, which is a bit problematic because um, from such kind of expressions, it's, it doesn't really specify the, the object of interest or the, the location, where, which one it is. Um, as you can see, there are two sticky notes on the table, and Bob gets confused about the ambiguous spatial expression. But uh, luckily, in many cases, we have um, other objects, or we can make use of other nearby objects that, that uh, let us better specify the location of the object we actually want to refer to. In this case, Alice refers to Bob's glasses to clarify which notes she's actually referring to. So it gets clear, and um, yeah, Bob knows which, uh, which sticky notes he has to hand over. And in this case, the glasses serve as a spatial cue to better um, identify the actual object of interest, uh, the working object, the work object in this case. So coming back to mixed realities, um, the same basically applies for, mixed, uh, for collaborative mixed reality environments. Here we have the, the digital representation of our work objects, say these uh, white cubes. And we also have the physical environment that is shown in the see-through display. That provides us with a shared visual context and lots of potential spatial, physical spatial cues, as you can see. For instance, you, one could use the, the display to specify the location of one of the white cubes. But um, mixed realities, uh, much is possible with mixed realities, and the question raised with this, uh, with this project was how do additive virtual objects influence the communication process uh, or communication behavior um, and are they also used as spatial cues uh, for object, identif uh, ident op sorry, object identification tasks, or are they just ignored? And to answer this question, we conducted a, lo a lab study with uh, 16 diets using uh, within subject subjects design with the availability of uh, additive virtual objects being the independent variable. And as an object identification task, we designed a modified version of the very famous memory card game uh, where the diets had to collaboratively find not cards, uh, matching cards, pairs of cards, but matching pairs of cubes. Now, this way could, we could make them uh, exchange lots of spatial uh, information. Here you can see the condition without any additive virtual objects. So here someone is pointing. Pointing was uh, used a lot in both conditions. Unfortunately, it's not a match, so they had to uh, cover it again and, and, and go to the next turn. Now, in the, this is the condition with the additive virtual cues, or we didn't know whether they were cues, but additive objects. Let's call them additive virtual objects, uh, such as a shelf. And um, 
uh, a vending machine, a chair, and some plants. And um, so collaborators could, or the diets could ac actually make theor theoretically use of them as spatial cues. So uh, what did we do? We um, analyzed communication behavior and identified several categories of spatial references that um, occurred frequently. And before I go through the most important ones, I need to say that in none of the two conditions there were more or significantly more or less overall spatial references made. So the, 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 the total of spatial references made was al almost the same in both. But what changed significantly was the, the proportions of the categories that were used. So um, the obvious, when we added these virtual objects like the, the chair and so on, um, these, these objects were immensely or extensively used as, um, yeah, as spatial cues to better describe the, uh, or to better identify the target object. Um, another, yeah, ex and when the additive virtual objects were provided in the second condition, um, participants made significantly less use of the rather problematic uh, dated expressions like over here and over there. Um, also, when the additive virtual objects were provided, the average number of hand gestures also decreased, which is pr in general good because there was more space for hands-free interaction in principle. Um, and finally, spatial references based on other virtual um, cubes or the work, other work objects also decreased. And using other cu cubes was also a bit problematic uh, as they all looked the same when they were covered or not uncovered. Um, yeah. The results of the reported task load and user experience support these findings. Uh, when additive virtual objects were provided, participants reported a signif significantly lower um, task load and an uh, improved user experience, which was justified by the statements that it was easier to express or articulate oneself. So we therefore clearly suggest adding virtual objects as spatial cues to collaborative mixed reality environments, uh, at least for tasks that include spatial referencing, like object identification, because they um, can help collaborators um, exchange space, spatial information. Um, they thereby help uh, decrease user task load, or decrease user task load, and at the same time improve the overall um, user experience. Yeah, with this, I'd like to end this talk, and I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you.